It's interesting. In, uh, in America, in the television industry, the writer is in charge of everything. So the writer oversees the process, the writer is the executive producer, and the director is very, very important, but the directors change every episode. So on a TV show, the writer is in charge of everything. So when you learn in that process, as a writer, you're used to controlling how it works, the process, you work with the actors, you do everything, and then in film, the writer, in the past, would just hand over a script and be done, and now there's a an evolution in comedy to where oftentimes the writer more and more becomes the director and becomes the producer and oversees the entire process. So coming from television you're very used to being in charge, but in, in film the writer rarely is, so that's why it's a natural segue to be a writer-director. And I think also uh, for us as a team, because I work with my directing partner Alex back in Los Angeles, he and I have written together and produced television programs together for years and years, so to be film directors together was very natural. We wrote it for ten years, and so every three months, six months, we'd do a rewrite, we'd change it, we'd improve it hopefully, and then when you bring in actors, the process starts all over again, and you work with them. And our acting cast is a very talented group of writers as well, and improvisers. So we would go to them, so the lead actor, Jason Sudeikis, uh, is also a great writer, so he would have great ideas for jokes, for suggestions, for scenes, and Will Forte and Nick Kroll and Tyler Labine and all of the actors and the actresses, Lindsay Sloan and Lake Bell, Leslie Bibb, they're all so funny that when they got the script, we would say, please, any suggestions you have, any ideas, any improvisation, because in the end it just makes the process better. So it's always an important part of the evolution of the project when the actors are involved. I think for us, the movie there were two movies that inspired us uh, for this. One was The Big Chill, uh, which was comedic but also very dramatic. Um, and ours is a little lighter than that, but that was a very kind of important film for us about a group of friends and kind of adult friends. And then also uh, Risky Business was a movie that from my youth I loved. It was ridiculous. It's about Tom Cruise as a high school student falling in love with a prostitute. And his big project at the end of the year is he is going to introduce all of his high school friends to prostitutes and then because he does that, he gets into Princeton University and his life is great. So we're like, that's a crazy, no one makes those movies anymore when we started writing this, the R-rated comedy of our youth that felt both kind of real but also funny and silly or like something that felt classic. So even how we filmed it, the look of it, the music, everything we were trying to make something that felt almost a little timeless where it could have been made almost in any era except it's about a particular generation and, and how they missed out on the sexual revolution. It's a very difficult movie to have distribution for everyone. I think they like the idea, they think it sounds interesting and funny, and then they say, but to actually put it in your movie theater, to put it on the marquee, to put up the poster, to have those moments, you say, oh, that's really, really potentially offensive to a lot of people. Certainly in America, a lot of the country has problems with the word orgy. In, uh, for instance, even uh, you know, for some of the DVDs, the word orgy, we can't have it on the cover of the DVD. So it's, it's, diff it's difficult. Yeah. I guess that was one of the debates was do you not have the word orgy in the title of the film? But then we thought, well, they're going to see the movie. They'll know what it's about. And then it's like you sold them something else. And they say, wait a second. It's about an orgy. So I think you just put it out front and say, if you can handle it, you're going to like it. And if you can't, this is not your movie. It's not for everyone. Great comedies, they don't make fun of things to be mean. They do it almost to be curious and, and to, to see where there's comedy, be it in sex or religion or other taboo areas. And I do think in America, they're, the comedians oftentimes do break ground before you know, a lot of other people will have those conversations.